Did you know that you could get even longer interviews with some of the most successful creators? You can with How I Built It Pro. With How I Built It Pro, you get extended ad-free versions of every episode. We cover things like pricing memberships, how to make course creation even faster, building a creator business while also parenting, current events, and more. Plus, you'll get bonus episodes where I offer a behind-the-scenes look at what I'm working on, the revenue for my own creator business, experiments, and video demos of the tech I talk about on this show. You can join How I Built It Pro today for just 5 bucks a month or 50 bucks a year. Sign up over at howibuilt.it slash pro or use the link in your podcast app. How do you grow a newsletter to 20,000 subscribers in less than a year? Try this one trick. Want to 5X your YouTube downloads? Do this. These are both titles I could have given this episode. And taking the advice of Jake Thomas, I should have. See, Jake studies YouTube titles to see what makes people click. And while he gives some away for free in his newsletter, he also has a whole searchable database that you can pay to get access to. So today, Jake tells us how he built his subscriber base up to 20,000 subscribers in a year, as well as the importance of good titles, not just on YouTube, but everywhere. In the pro show, we talk about pricing. He was just changing his pricing when we recorded this episode. And we talk about the Yankees because we're both Yankee fans. So if you don't feel like you get enough of that from me on a regular basis check out The Pro Show. You can find all of the show notes, including a link to this database. I'm a part of it, and it's incredible. Uh, You can find a link to everything that we talked about over at the show notes over at howibuilt.it slash 304. But for now, let's get to the intro and then the interview. Hey, everybody, and welcome to How I Built It, the podcast where you get free coaching calls from successful creators. Each week, you get actionable advice on how you can build a better content business to increase revenue and establish yourself as an authority. I'm your host, Joe Casabona. Now let's get to it. All right, welcome to episode 304 of How I Built It. I'm here with Jake Thomas. He is the founder of Creator Hooks. And I'm really excited to talk to him today because first of all, love Creator Hooks, love the model for Creator Hooks Pro. And the product is something I that solves a really big problem that I would agonize over. So we're going to get into all of that. I mean, if you read the title and description of this episode, you know what we're going to talk about. So let's bring in Jake. Jake, how are you today? Joe, I'm doing excellent. How are you? I am fantastic. Thanks so much for coming on the show. I was telling you in the pre-show that I was gr- I was gushing to my friend Brian Richards about like when you launched Creator Hooks Pro. I'm like, this is so brilliant, and I don't have like a um an analog idea that I could steal, right? Like there, like I just don't. There's nothing like that for me in in my niche. Um, so super cool. I, I usually. Don't start here, but let's start with telling people what Creator Hooks is and what Creator Hooks Pro is. Yeah, so Creator Hooks is a newsletter. Uh, It sends you five proven YouTube video ideas every single week. I kind of break down why they work and then also show you how you could use those ideas for your niche. So uh, so like when I was uh, at my last job, I was a YouTube uh, channel manager and we were a fishing channel. And every Monday (laughs) we would have our content meeting and I was like the marketing manager. So I would come up with all the ideas. We had the fishing coaches that were doing like the cool stuff. Um, they were like actually like, going out and fishing. I was uh, sitting on my couch doing all the work. But, um, but so I was in charge of coming up with the ideas. And we were posting two videos a day. So I needed a lot of ideas. Wow. And um, so I would do things like I'd go to like, uh, like finance um, YouTube channels and be like, uh, all right, what is working for them? You know, five best credit cards in 2023. So then I would be like, all right, well, let's do five best trout lures in 2023. Um, like really similar, but like like adjacent, but kind of just like modeling what works for them. And yeah. that worked really well for us. And then I was like, well, shoot, if this is working well for us, like it has nothing to do with my industry. Uh, I bet this would work well for other channels. So I drafted up the like first edition of Creator Hooks Pro, sent it to a bunch of people. 
And it turns out that they liked it. I got like my first 20 subscribers or 10 subscribers, like cold DMing people oh, um, that awesome. like didn't know. And like I sent them like a Google Doc of like, hey, I'm going to turn this into a newsletter. <laughs> Do you want to subscribe? And they're like, yeah, sure. That sounds cool. So, so that's how it got started. Um, and how like, many subscribers do you have now as we record this? It's like a lot, right? Because you were like live, like you were like tweeting milestones for a while. I was tweeting milestones for a while. I was tweet, tweeting like every hundred and then I did every thousand. And then I felt like it kind of got lame. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm almost at 20,000. I'm at like, wow. Uh, yeah, a couple, a couple hundred, a couple hundred shy of 20,000. Uh, this year, like, uh, so. Like we're recording this in 2022. In January, I think January 2nd, I tweeted like my one goal is to hit 10,000 subscribers. And I had like 580 subscribers. And I was like, there's no, there's no way. Like I felt like an idiot, like tweeting this. I was like, I have no idea how this is going to happen, but I'm just going to tweet about it and see how it goes. And here we are. That's amazing. Cause that's like, that's like, I feel like the struggle is real. Like, so I have a newsletter. I have never broken, uh, Before May, I had never broken like a thousand. Um, And then I started like really focusing on podcasting stuff. And now like I'm at like 1100 and I'm, but like I've also been seeing like the good kind of churn where like people from my WordPress life are coming off of my list (laughs) and podcasters are going on to my list. Nice. Um, And so even though it's like around the same it's like 400 more than it was in May. Nice. Uh, as we record this. But it's all, it's actually like 700 more... Real real subscribers. Real subscribers, yeah. So, which is cool. Um, but yeah, 20,000 in... Uh, well, okay, so like 19,000, let's say, in a year. <laughs> yeah. uh, how, how did you do that? I told you I was going to tee you up with an easy question first, but this is really fascinating to me. <laughs> um, so, it, like, it it wasn't it wasn't me. It was um, mm-hmm. I. So I th- I think uh, like this is going to sound kind of weird, but like I think it's a good idea. So like it's not like my opinion. It's not like oh I think this is how you write a good YouTube title. It's mm-hmm. like hey these titles did well, and here's how you can use them. Um, yeah. So it's it's almost like a tool, like kind of like kind of like software, but like not really. Yeah. Um, and uh, think uh, think media made like two videos about me. They have like two million subscribers mm. on YouTube, and VidIQ made uh, like one and a half videos. They made yeah one video, and then I was on their podcast. Um, so nice. like probably ten thousand of those people are from those two channels. Wow. And uh, so yeah, so if I didn't have those, I'd probably be like five or ten thousand. I'd probably right. be way way smaller than I am. But um, but I got big breaks by being on those channels. Um, and those came from networking on Twitter. Uh, I met the people behind both of those channels through posting threads and like, uh, just like, you know, like DMing them and like just kind of chatting them up. And then all of a sudden like, Hey man, we're doing a video or do you want to be on the podcast or whatever? Um, so that's been, uh, that's been huge. Wow. So big lesson here, right? There's two, two, I think big lessons to take away. Create a utility, right? Like, curate. People have been saying this forever, right? Like, curation is so valuable to a lot of people, and that's essentially what you're. You're like you're doing like curation and analysis, right? You're like this. These are videos that worked. Here's like the score, the differential score. We'll talk about implementation in a minute because like I'm really curious about that too. Um, but then you also got in front of other people's audiences, which is something that I tell my podcast students and clients. All the time, right? Like, go be on other podcasts and then promote your podcast. Yeah, definitely. And that's, yeah, that's, that was huge. You know, kind of like just borrowing other people's audiences. Um, and, you know, this is like, I got my Think Media posted about me in like March. And I went from 800 subscribers to like two or 3,000 subscribers in like March or April. Wow. Um, that's awesome. So that, yeah, that was like that, that first big jump of like nobody to like, holy crap, now I'm in the thousands. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, my uh, my convert kids subscription just got more expensive. Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, I was I was on free Mailchimp. I didn't even know. I think convert kid has a free uh, a yeah, free, free tier now. Yeah, free yeah. tier now. I didn't know that. I so I was on Mailchimp and I was like, oh, geez, I guess I gotta I gotta move to convert kit now. Nice. Full disclosure, uh, convert kit has sponsored this podcast before, and I've done brand deals with them for short form videos. Nice. Uh, <laughs> no, no disclosure for me. I have not worked with them, but I do like them. Nice. Yeah. That's like, I mean, I like them too. That's why I work with them. Like, that's like my whole business is, 
if if someone was like, you need to move from ConvertKit today, I'd be like, I might as well just start from scratch. Like, I might as well just burn my whole business <laughs> down. Uh, <laughs> um, that's but that's amazing. And so, um, let's get to the core of Creator Hooks, right? Because the whole the whole point of this is you talk about titles and thumbnails that worked, right? Titles. Is it? It's titles more, but you talk mostly, about the thumbnails. Mostly yeah. title. It's like ninety nine percent title, a little bit thumbnail. Yeah. So, how important are titles and thumbnails on YouTube? I mean, if nobody clicks your video, no one's gonna watch it, <laughs> and then you just like <laughs> wasted all of your time uh, making that video, and you also didn't get any of the benefits from uh, actually people watching that video and consuming your content. So it's it's huge, you know. Uh, you see stories all the time of people like, oh, I just changed my title or I changed my thumbnail and all of a sudden, boom, it's so much better. And uh, a couple a couple months ago, I was working with a client in like real estate and they had they had like a really busy CEO. So like their whole channel was like just clips of him talking on like different podcasts and stuff. It was like, it, it was good content, but it wasn't like YouTube content. Right. Um, and their channel was doing okay. And then I started writing some of their titles and we like just doubled their views every single time. Wow. Um, so I worked with them for a little bit and like almost every video we were doubling what they were getting like last month. Um, you know, and we didn't change any of the content. Like it's not like, oh yeah, we also, you know, increased our average view duration and everything. And like, right. he got better telling stories. It's like, no, we only changed the title um, and we were doubling views. So yeah, it, it's huge. Yeah, that's amazing. That's like, maybe that's what I should do, right? Like, maybe that's what I should focus on in the beginning of this year. Because I'm like, I need to make more videos. But I'm like, I, I told you in the pre-show, like, I'm really focused on podcasts, like creating podcast content um, and like growing podcasts, kind of like showing my audience, like I know what I'm doing. Um, but uh, I have, I mean, my YouTube channel, I have two YouTube channels. One's like 10 years old. One is a year or so old. Uh, and I feel like, yeah, maybe just changing the titles and the thumbnails. Maybe, so So let me ask you, right? Because like, I hate making thumbnails. Like I hate like doing the dumb face <laughs> and then like outlining it on Canva and then like trying to figure out what word that's not in the title to put on the thumbnail. Um, you said you only changed the, did you say you only changed the titles and doubled the views or, or you did both? Only the t- only the title. For for that uh, for that company or that channel, we only, like, I did, we didn't change any old titles. Like, they averaged, you know, X amount of views. And then when I wrote the title for their videos moving forward, they averaged 2X amount of views. Gotcha. Um, and, but all, I did change the, uh, I changed the words in the thumbnail. I'm okay. mostly like a words guy, not, uh, I'm, I'm slowly getting better at thumbnails. Mm-hmm. Um, but my strength is in words. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but I mean, like, that's also, like, really promising, right? Because, oh, yeah. Because, like, you know, I read Daryl Eve's book, The YouTube Formula, and he's like, you need five photos of you with five different emotions. And Mr. Beast just has, like, a library of his face that he could Photoshop. And, and I'm like, that is, should I try that? I'm not Mr. Beast by any, in, in content or wallet size, <laughs> like, um, um, I do mostly tutorial videos, and I think that's that was maybe again like in in my old life, right? I was doing a lot of here's how to do this in WordPress. Um, and so <clears throat> I think it's really interesting that maybe I can rejuvenate some of those by changing just the title or the you know making small tweaks to the thumbnail. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, um, Ed from Film Booth, uh, the YouTube channel Film Booth, he has a video about how he. Uh, just like he unpublished a bunch of videos and just like changed all of his titles and thumbnails and his channel like blew up because of that. So, wow. and he's in like kind of education, edutainment. Um, so yeah. that worked really well for him. Um, and that's, I've been ca- trying to think, um, I've got like a little like side project dog YouTube channel. Um, and I've been trying to think more quality than quantity. Like I used to just publish on a strict schedule. Like, all right, I, I publish videos every Sunday. Um, and then, you know, creator hoax got in the way and I was like trying to like scale and trying to hire people, but I kind of found that I was just like scaling crap. (laughs) Like just the YouTube, the videos kind of stunk, like everything stunk about it. Um, so I was like, all right, well, let me just go back to like actually making quality videos that people are actually going to want to click on. Um, and like putting more effort into my thumbnail instead of just like slapping together 
like a stock photo. Um, so that's where like that's where my head's been at, and it's been working. Uh, it's been working so far. So far, nice. That is the exact strategy I also want to take this year. Like, um, it, like I have like I have the focused calendar behind me. And I don't know if you listen to the Focus podcast with uh, David Sparks and um, Mike something. Sorry, Mike something. Um, but they they make this like dry erase like year view calendar. Like they worked with this company called New Year. I'll link to it in the show notes, which you could find over at uh, how I built at it slash three oh four. But it's like this big dry erase calendar, and I'm using it as a production calendar. And so like the end of every month for the six six first six months, I have YouTube video, um, and I have like an Airtable full of ideas with titles based on <laughs> Creator Hooks Pro. Um, and I think I'm just going to focus on that too. Like, you know, spend a couple of hours a week making a good video instead of like turning on the camera. And go, I'll just talk about this for like 10 minutes and I'll use my stream deck to edit and then I'll just upload it. Like that's like not, you know, there there is an important part of the compelling content, right? And maybe I don't, maybe we shouldn't let that get lost is you can't just put out a crappy video with a killer title. Like that'll get clicks. But yeah. it won't. It won't get engagement. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It'll it'll, it'll get you clicks, but uh, like you know, like you said. But then that's gonna kind of be it. You know, they right. they might click on your video once, but then like, oh, this video is crap. This channel is crap. I'm not gonna click on it again. Um, and just you know, not not uh not watch any more videos. Yeah, right. This is the you know this was such a crazy thing. Uh, the, uh, Roberto Blake on he's like so active on Twitter. I love following him. Um. And, uh, or maybe we'll have to like bleep that later. Uh, <laughs> like he's so active on and then whatever social network he happens to be on. Um, and one of the things he did was like, send me a screenshot of your YouTube stats and I'll tell you how you can improve it. And I was like, here's one for you. I have all of my engagement coming in the last 10 seconds of the video. And the last 20 seconds of the video is just an end screen. So like, it looks like people are clicking on it and going to the last 10 seconds. Cause like the watch percentage like spikes right at the end. Oh, wow. And he's like, I've never seen that before. And I'm like, well, at least I'm not dumb. <laughs> at least I'm not really confused by this. I, I'm confused. I've never, I've never seen that yeah. either. <laughs> Like, it feels like maybe some, like, the people are just clicking and then, like, maybe scrubbing and then stopping at the end. They're like, ah, I didn't want to watch that. Yeah, and it's probably uh, just because it's, like, me. It's me the whole time doing like this or whatever, like, just faces. <laughs> um, So, uh, that's, like, maybe a good, you know, I was, again, using the advice that you were sending in your newsletter. And so, maybe I had good titles and people were clicking. And then they were like, oh, this uh, <laughs> doesn't deliver. This doesn't deliver on what I thought it would. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's... uh. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole package. I creator hooks is just one one piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Um now uh I do want there's an anecdote that you kind of mentioned right link uh I'm sorry Ed from Film Booth did this. I listened to a, a podcast called Cortex with CGP Gray. I think CGP Gray is great. Uh he his his video on uh like how the interstate highways are numbered is like very fascinating to me. Like it's just like he takes like these or like why airport codes uh, like are the way they are. Just really interesting like bespoke, seemingly bespoke <laughs> things that you don't think about that he like deeply researches. I love that word. Bespoke, yeah. So good, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> it like is what the word is. Uh, um, but uh, on his podcast Cortex uh, with, with Mike Hurley, uh, he was talking about how he has long COVID or had long COVID. And so he wasn't putting out the videos he had hoped. He has, he's a very, he's like, he's an established, such an established YouTuber that like he makes a living off of YouTube without putting out a new video every two days or whatever, like what, what, what you have to do. He puts one out like every four to six weeks. Um, and uh, he wasn't putting out, he wasn't doing the output he wanted because he was sick. Uh, but he was changing the titles and the thumbnails for old videos, like eight-year-old videos. And he said that just changing the thumbnails and the, and the titles 
got him like 125 million new views. That is insane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's such a good story of like the power of equality over quantity. Yeah. And also the importance of titles and thumbnails. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So like, and I, you know, and granted, like Gray is huge. Like if you watch, you've, pro- you've probably seen one of his videos. If you spent like, it's like this stick figure with glasses, like teaching you something. Like it's a very recognizable brand, but like it cuts against what's what like tech YouTubers might have you believe. Right. And don't get me wrong. MKBHD puts out some of the best content, right? I just watched his like best smartphone of 2022 video today and it was like amazing. And I went and voted even though the results were already out because I I was curious to see how it worked. But, uh, you know, he's not putting out a new video every two days. Uh, And he's still, that's still his livelihood. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, dude, there's so many ways to win on YouTube. It's crazy. You know, you've got like Patty Galloway puts like four videos out a year. You know, you've got these, uh, you know, other like sh- shorts creators that are putting like, you know, a couple of videos out a day. Um, there's there's so many ways. Yeah. There's so many ways to win on YouTube. I love that. Because um, I think the other thing that people worry about is like, well, you know, you're like, you are beholden to the algorithm. Um, and like, that's true to a certain extent, but how else are you going to get in front of people? Yeah. Like, so if you make good content… And and YouTube knows so much about its people that it's like, hey, you would really like this. Yeah, I, th- I feel like YouTube is the most merit-based platform. And maybe it's, you know, sorry, I guess maybe I'm, when I'm thinking about like, when you're trying to rank in search, like Google and YouTube, are the, those are like two of the two of the platforms I have a decent amount of experience in. Right. And, and they're, just, they're one and two, right? Go- yeah. It's Google and YouTube are one and two. Yeah, but like on the, on Google, if you're trying to rank on the first page and like you you're competing against like these you know these massive companies or like you know like web like a uh, Med in, or um wow I'm like blanking on the name like WebMed or uh, uh, oh it, yeah like Web M, uh, WebMD, WebMD yeah. thank you <laughs> right yeah like or like you know like Bustle or you know just like these massive companies like yeah. even if they have like crappy content like they're gonna right. outrank you. And um, and that says nothing of like the ads, right? Like you could Google something and and yeah, you could just buy the top spot. Yeah, yeah. But then I feel like YouTube is more like just if you make a good video with a good title and thumbnail, I feel like you are more likely to have success. Yeah, and that's and that's I think that's really smart, right? And it takes time, right? Like YouTube needs to learn about you and about the people that you talk to. Yes. But, so one of my buddies, uh, he had a basketball channel and he launched it. He launched like four videos. And within like a month, one of his videos had like 500,000 views. Wow. Uh, to be fair, he was a, he's a very good, uh, he's, he's really good at uh, YouTube. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's not like he, he's learning these skills like from scratch. Right. Uh, but it was just like, holy crap. And like, it's been, I think, I don't know, like two months and now his video, like one of his videos is at like a million views. Wow. Um, so, so like, yes, I think oftentimes YouTube maybe does need to know your audience. Um, but sometimes it's like, hey, like yeah. people are liking this video. We're going to, sh- we're going to show it a lot. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's like you also need to know your audience, right? Because I think that's like part <laughs> yeah. of it, right? Like my YouTube channel, my main YouTube channel, uh, I met with a YouTube consultant, like I, uh, you I, you mentioned vidIQ right so I like signed up for like a year of their service and um it came with like a free like YouTube consultant call and like one of the questions that he asked me was you need to look at your channel and decide if this video goes viral like are you cool with only making videos about that and if the answer is no you need to unlist that video that's a great question um yeah it's a really good question and I, I was like all over the place right I was like Here's my Sony A6400 and here I set it up, which by the way is my most popular video. So like going based on that, I should do gear videos, but I don't want to do gear videos. Like that's like, everyone does gear videos. Um, And then there's like this WordPress tutorial. I'm like, here are my thoughts on this. And like, here's how you automate with Zapier. And that is, it's actually now, as I say, it's like kind of shocking that my channel is like monetized and still gets subscribers. (laughs) But like it could grow faster, right? If if I know who I'm talking to, so that YouTube knows who I'm trying to talk to. Yeah, exactly. And we've all we so we've been talking about YouTube, 
Uh, but like, so creator hooks, like all I do is like study what makes people click and like titles and it works for all content. And here's a, a podcast story for you. So, um, <clears throat> so Steve Chu has uh, my wife quit her job. Uh, mm-hmm. It's an e-commerce podcast. And then I think it was Mike Jackness has like, uh, you know, also an e-commerce podcast and they did a podcast together and they each, um, they each published it kind of like on the same time. So in yeah. my, in my feed, I saw like, they were like, I was like, Oh, I think these are similar, but Steve wrote like such a better title. So, so I clicked it and uh, I downloaded his, um, and like, that's got to happen, you know, often where like people, you know, if they're deciding, all right, what podcast am I going to listen to, you know, or which episode am I going to listen to? If you have a great title, uh, you know, it's not an algorithm where it's going to like go viral, but you're going to start, I think you're going to start getting those, uh, those downloads one at a time and just start building an audience that way. Yeah. Th- I love that you said that. Cause this is what I, again, this is what I tell my students, right? Cause like I like caused it. I didn't realize this was going to like trigger people. But I said, like, don't put episode numbers in your podcast titles. Like, don't. And people are like, why? That way people know what number it is. I'm like, who cares what number it is? I agree. It it literally doesn't matter. If if it's like terrible content and it's your 500th episode, that doesn't make me want to listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. What's going to make you want to listen is like a great title. It's like, right. it kind of like grabs you like emotionally. It's like, oh, yeah. shoot, like what, what happens here? Man, I really, I really want to learn this. This episode is brought to you by Groundhog. Groundhog is an open source CRM and marketing automation suite for serious agencies, small businesses, content creators, e-commerce experts, and WordPress professionals. Groundhog allows you to create funnels, automate email and SMS communications, and manage your contacts from the comfort of your WordPress dashboard. Unlike other SaaS CRM platforms, Groundhog does not charge you a success tax. Groundhog charges a flat rate fee, regardless of the size of your list. Groundhog will never charge you more as your list grows. It also integrates with all of the top WordPress, e-commerce, LMS, and membership plugins to create a unified customer experience. Start now with a 14-day demo for $1. Go to howibuilt.it slash groundhog. That's howibuilt.it slash G-R-O-U-N-D-H-O-G-G. Or use the code How I Built It for twenty percent off your first year of any plan. Thanks so much to Groundhog for sponsoring this episode of How I Built It. This episode is brought to you by Learn Dash. Look, I've been making courses for a long time. I've taught at the college level, and I've created curriculums for several different organizations, including Udemy, Sessions College, and LinkedIn Learning. When I create my own courses, there's no better option than LearnDash. LearnDash combines cutting-edge e-learning tools with WordPress. They're trusted to power learning programs for major universities, small to mid-sized companies, startups, and creators worldwide. What makes LearnDash so great is it was created by and is run by people who deeply understand online learning and adds features that are truly helpful for independent course creators. I love the user experience. And now you can import Vimeo and YouTube playlists and have a course created automatically in seconds. I trust LearnDash to run my courses and membership, and you should too. Learn more at howibuilt.it slash learn dash. If you listen to this show, you know it's an amazing time to be a creator. It's never been easier to get paid for your expertise. But being a high performing creator is a different ballgame. High performing creators generate consistent monthly recurring profits. They trust the process and don't overlook the essential fundamentals of business. They are dedicated to becoming masters of their craft and creating more customer value. And high-performing creators are business owners as much as they are artists. If you want to become a high-performing creator that earns a living from selling your expertise, then I recommend you join the Solo CEO Club today. 
Surround yourself with other high-performing creators. Expand your influence, increase your income, and cultivate a deep impact on your customers through meaningful interactions. Become a member of the Solo CEO Club today by visiting jointhescc.com. Again, that's J-O-I-N-T-H-E-S-C-C dot com. And you can get 33% off your first month with the coupon code CASABONA. The Solo CEO Club, where creators become high-performing experts. So for creator hooks, right? Again, what I love, what I what it does that I love is it. you take a title that you know worked and then you give it a score, right? Like, and it's like basically the difference based on what the, their average views versus how many views this video got. Yes. Yeah. So like if, if a channel averages 10,000 views a video, but then all of a sudden one video got 100,000 views, you're like, wait a minute, there's something here. This is a huge outlier. So in Creator Hooks, that would be a hook score of uh, 1,000 because it got 10 times more. Okay. So that is cool because um, if Mr. Beast posts a video, he's going to get 20 million views or 50 million views, whatever it is. Uh, right. But like he always gets 50 million views. Right. So it's like, it's not that cool. Um, but if like a channel that, you know, has, uh, you know, they average like, you know, 1 million views and then they get 20 million views, that's a huge outlier. Right. So Creator Hooks is just like studying outliers um, and trying to see what are the patterns between these outliers, you know, what can we learn from them? Yeah, and so um, how how do you do that? You use like a tool? Is that like your secret sauce? Like you don't have to talk about that? No, 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 no. I, I there's a video on my website about how I do it. Um, nice, but no, I, I it's it's manual. <laughs> like okay, I just I you know I just count them up. I'm like all right, cool. Like I I just I scroll for outliers, and if I I'll kind of like take a mental note of like all right, well this channel like okay twenty thousand, thirty thousand, fifteen thousand, sixty thousand. All right, well it's about like thirty or forty, and then oh two hundred thousand. Wait, there's something here. Let me kind of do a scope of kind of their other recent videos. Like, is this an actual outlier or do they just periodically, you know, their other views just way up and down? That's so interesting. And so how do you figure out, like, do you go to like the trending tab or like, do you just go to like category no, tabs? No, so I'm, I'm only looking at like kind of recent videos. So, okay, okay. Um, like, so I'll just look at, you know, their last 20 videos or like, you know, I try not to calculate hook score like, if a video is older than two months old, mm-hmm. um, because sometimes like that can be, uh, maybe it's like ranking in search and like none of their right. other videos are ranking in search, but like this was actually just a good keyword. Like maybe they right. didn't write a good title. Um, yeah. So I'm trying, I'm trying to see like what kind of blew up, um, you know, right away. Yeah. But like, how do you find those creators? Oh, uh, yeah. just <laughs> spending a lot of time on, on YouTube. Nice. Um, I have a list of like 400 um, that I go through. Um, but also I'll just like, I'll just spend a lot of time. Sometimes I'll open up like a uh, YouTube incognito mode and I'll like, cause I'm a, I'm a dude. And like, if it was just me, it would be like marketing and fitness right. channels, like, yeah. and like finance, like that would be, yeah. those would be the only, the only thing. So I'm like actively trying to like click on like female creators, like just creators that are like different from me. Right. Um, so I'll, sometimes I'll open up YouTube on an incognito and I'll just like, I'll type up like best makeup brushes. Like, all right, cool. On YouTube, okay. I am a female. I'm looking at like these makeup brushes. Like, you know, yeah. show me, show me some more videos like this. I'm trying to get out of my, my normal habits. So yeah, so just off like recommended and homepage are two of the biggest uh, ways. I'm just like trying to let Google or let YouTube show me what is uh, kind of trending right now. Nice. Um, and as far as Creator Hooks Pro goes, right? So this is, I think this is, again, brilliant because you're doing this manual work. You're keeping that information somewhere. And you're giving people in your newsletter like five. Uh, I should also say like you, do, you also do one that flops, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like negative. Yeah. yeah. So like it's cool to learn what works, but I think it's also potentially just as helpful to see what doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so I see kind of like the same things every week. It's like, all right, this title is like too long or too wordy, or this is like this t- uh, topic is too narrow or this topic is too broad, um, kind of things like that. So just yeah. like, you know, just studying what doesn't work. And uh, yeah, that, uh, and I calculate that the same way. It's like, all right, you know, this, you know, this channel, like it averaged 10,000 news video, but this video got 1,000. Like what's wrong with that? 
Yeah. The one that the the reason that always resonates with me the most is they did a video about why and they usually only talk about X. And I'm like, man, I really need to focus. Like it'll be like, yes. you know, uh, yes. oh like yes. like ha- like what moving was like for me or whatever, right? And it's like, no, they always talk about keyboards. And this time they talked about like moving house or whatever. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean, and it can be like a really big things. Like if you have a fitness channel, like talking about like your, uh, like how you grew your YouTube channel. It's like, all right, well, that's not why people watch your, watch your channel. Or it could be like a fitness channel. Like you talk about like weightlifting and then you're talking about like nutrition. Like sometimes like that's like a much smaller difference, but uh, you know, but there are some channels where people watch those channels for very specific reason. And right. when you kind of, you know, when you vary from that, then, you know, oftentimes people are like, yeah, that's not why I watch this channel. I'm not going to click on this video. Yeah. You know, it's so funny because uh, Super Carlin Brothers is a channel I love. They do like fan theories for Pixar and Harry Potter mostly. Um, and they, uh, for a while, I think we're doing Naruto, of the anime. And I noticed that they stopped doing that pretty quickly. And I'm like, yeah, people are people are here for Harry Potter. Like, <laughs> that's why they're here. Uh, yeah. I thought that was, and they're big. Like, and so I, like, they probably decided to like explore this topic. And I think they do that more on their podcast now, which like makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> there, I mean, there's so much that goes into it. Uh, you know, it's definitely possible to do that, but it's also, you know, there are some channels that, you know, uh, p- the audience doesn't care what they talk about. Like they love right. this creator. Yeah. Um, so I think it really comes down to what type of channel do you have? Why do people watch your video? Is it because of you or is it because of your content? Yeah. I like that a lot. And so Creator Hooks Pro, you keep this database. I think it's a, well, maybe I shouldn't talk about the implementation, right? I don't know if it's like. No, but- I mean, it's so. So I was trying to, I, I wrote the newsletter for like for free. I didn't make like a single dollar off the newsletter. Right. I did a little bit of consulting, um, but for like a, a little over a year. And I was like, all right, well, uh, I would like to make some money because I'm spending a lot of time on this. Uh, do you, and so I posted on Twitter, like, do you all want me to do like an ebook or like a, a course? And a lot of people said, we just want ideas. <laughs> like, um, and then also people were emailing me saying like, hey, like I've been taking notes. Like I have this like Google Doc of like, you know, some of my favorite ideas from the newsletter. And um, so I was like, oh, well, shoot, like maybe I'll just, like I have all of these in a spreadsheet, like in in like Google Sheets. And I use it all the time, um, you know, when I'm writing uh, titles for like for clients or for myself, I always use this spreadsheet. So I was like, well, shoot, let me try to turn this into, you know, make this publicly available. So I, um, you know, I launched it. At first, it was just like an Airtable uh, doc, and yeah. it, uh, it was a little, a little ugly. Um, and I made some a couple of uh, a couple of changes from it. But yeah, I mean, it's just it's a big uh, swipe file. You know, a lot of people talk about the value of swipe files. A lot of people are lazy; they don't want they don't want to make their own swipe file, or right. like, or you know, maybe people are like me and like they kind of they're only stuck in like one like loop on YouTube where YouTube only shows them like a certain, uh, you know, a certain type of video. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, every, every week I send out five videos in the newsletter. I add, add about seven or eight per week in the Creator Hooks Pro. So averaging like a video a day. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it's ever growing. Uh, it's just crossed 500 uh, titles and thumbnails in there a couple of week, a couple of days ago. Nice. That's amazing. Uh, and I think that, again, that's like so smart. Um, you're like doing this research and, you know, um, I just, uh, in episode, two, I'm going to say 298, don't quote me on that right now, um, but I, I interviewed a woman named Molly Kaiser um, about how she had like a $59 ebook. It was 15 pages with front and back matter uh, that like wasn't actual content that she sold for $59 and it made her half a million dollars because at 298, I was right. Um, because it gave her niche a very clear strategy to make a lot more money than that. <laughs> yeah. And so like, it was just this one resource. Um, and so like people think, you know, I have like the profitable podcaster pack. It's like $39 and it's like my automation library and my podcast planners. And there's like miscellaneous PDFs there too. But like, 
when I put it together, I'm like, I need to shove as many things in there as possible to make it valuable. But like the automation library itself is valuable, right? It's just like a bunch of Zapier templates. Um, and, and so it gives people like a starting point where they don't have to start from scratch or it gives them ideas for their own automations. Um, and I think that's so smart to, um, to take what you're doing and it's such a valuable resource. So I love it. I'm on the website right now. I'm, uh, the lifetime value feels, or the lifetime plan. I, I'm not, I'm going to not going to say like prices or anything like that, just in case things change from the time <laughs> we record to the time, but the, um, the highest level price right now, I don't see how, why anybody would pass that up if they're going to get this. Um, so that's like uh, probably right after this call, I'm going to register <laughs> there. Um, and I just think it's, I just think it's such a great idea. Now in, in how I built it pro, we will talk about pricing. Uh, so if you want to learn more about that uh, and get ad free extended episodes of every uh, interview, uh, you can go to how I built it slash pro. And that is 50 bucks a year or five bucks a month, which is less than the coffee I paid for at the coffee shop this morning. Um, <laughs> So, but uh, this is great. And so I, I I really love what you're doing. I'm really glad that you came on the show today. Dude, I like, uh, I like, I like having like an extended edition as, as monetization. Dude, I've, I've been thinking so much about monetization and price and, you know, what can you do? And yeah, this is like how you, how you teed that up was like great. And like, we're also, we're already here. It's like, you know, you just asked me for like, you know, a couple extra minutes and yes, I can do that. I'm like, I'm not going to say like, no. Uh, yeah, dude, I, I like that. That's really cool. Thank you very much. This is, I like, this is what I tell my, my students, right? Like your membership benefits should be about um, low effort for you, high value for your audience. And so for my pro members, like thank you, pro members, um, five bucks a month to like never hear an ad and get like, what I think is probably the most valuable part of the conversation, right? Like we're going to talk about pricing. Who doesn't want to know about pricing? Um, pretty easy win for them. And it's just us talking for a little bit longer. Um, yeah, so that's that's great. Well, it's, it's good. We have uh, some mutual admiration here, which is cool. <laughs> um, what I want to leave the, the listeners with uh, right now is if they're getting started on YouTube today, like let's say they're making their first video, uh, what do you, what are like maybe the first two things that they should do? Uh, well, I'll tell you what I would do. If I was starting on YouTube today, I would pick my niche. And let's say I wanted to do um, a baseball channel. I would, I would look Love the for, topic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are you a baseball fan? Yeah, a huge Yankee fan. I'm like no, born and raised in New York. Yeah. Uh, can I, can I brag real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know how everyone's like sharing Spotify wrapped? Yeah. Did you, uh, So MLB TV like just shared their stats. Did uh, they really? Yeah. And I am in the top 99% of Yankee fans. Oh my I God. Wa- that's I amazing. Watched, I watched 132 games this year. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I need to, I, well, I got to find mine now. <laughs> Dude, yeah, they just they just emailed it to me. Um, ah, that's awesome. I, I know. I'm so I'm so proud of that. Yeah, that that's might awesome. Be like well, the, congratulations. The most the most proud thing I have uh, uh, that or the most the most proud accomplishment I've made all year. Yeah. Well, Although my my wife is pregnant, so that's uh, oh, congratulations. When does so, she do? Is she <laughs> like uh, Mar- uh, March. So so that oh. doesn't count for this year, you know. So that'll be yeah, my yeah, that'll be my sure. big accomplishment but, next like, year. This episode uh, is airing on. Funnily enough, March 6th, which is my oldest's birthday. So All right. by yeah, the time March, this episode comes out, you could be a dad. March 30th. Hopefully I'm not a dad by then, but yeah, it's possible. Yeah, yeah. hopefully, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like you're right in the in the window, right? Like anytime yes. after 36 yes. weeks, it should happen. But yes, uh, it could happen. Time. But uh, All right. So yeah, anyway. Awesome. So if, Congratulations. Yeah. So let's say you're yeah. making a video, uh, <laughs> if a I channel were to about make baseball. A, yeah. If I were making a, a YouTube channel about baseball, yeah. I, would, uh, I would find like the top five baseball channels. What I'd probably do if I was just getting started, if I didn't know what I was doing, I would just model. I would sort by most popular. And I would try to find the trends, like what like really works for these channels. Um, you know, maybe it's like you know ten uh, ten longest home runs, um, you know, in baseball history, right? So mm-hmm. like, and but maybe like all five channels have like that same video. All right, well, let me make my own version of that video. So I try to make my own version of those best videos. Yeah. And, 10 longest know, home runs by catchers or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. So, I just try to, I try to look for 
um, for like for trends. All right, like you know, baseball fans like they love this type of video. So I would yeah, I'd look for trends among all their top videos. I'd make those videos. I'd probably uh, like like kind of uh, like twist those videos just a little bit. Like you said, top ten uh, you know longest uh, home runs by catchers. You know, it might be like. Um, you know, you, you could do it a couple of ways. You could top like 10 longest Yankee home runs. Yeah. Um, you could be like 10 shortest home runs or... 10 longest Yankee home runs. Stanton, <laughs> Stanton, Judge, Stanton, Sanchez, Stanton, Judge. Like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so so you would iterate that a little bit. But then I'd also, I'd look at like basketball channels um, and like NFL channels. And I would say, all right, what works for them? Because like those are adjacent channels. And there's probably a good chance that like, you know, you would find something similar. Um, but then I'd also, I'd probably take it to like maybe another level of like, all right, why, like, what do I really want to do? do like, do I want to do, you know, these list videos or do I want to do like commentary? I um, mean, if it's commentary, like maybe I'll find like, um, you know, like history commentary or something like that. So I just, I would try to find like one, I try to find channels in my niche. And then two, I'd try to find adjacent channels in other niches. And I would just model, like I wouldn't come up with anything new. All I would do is model until I get a good feeling for what my audience likes to watch, and um, you know until I until I'm kind of confident in my titling skills or my my video idea skills. And I'd also I'd model um, and I'd probably find another channel outside my niche for this. But I would model like someone's like exact like setup, their lighting, uh, how long their videos are, how often they publish, um, you know, and. Like even like their offers, like who's like sponsoring them? Like how are they monetizing? Um, I, I probably wouldn't do anything new. I would just find adjacent channels that are working, um, and I would I'd model them heavily. And you know, and especially you know adjacent ch- you know channels in adjacent niches. It's like it's not like you're copying, but you've got a pretty good idea that this is going to work, um, and that'll get yeah. you a good start. And then you'll get a good feeling of like, okay, my audience like this likes this. I'm like really good at this. I hate doing this, um, and then just kind of go from there. Yeah, that makes perfect sense, right? Like, like do what lookalike audiences like. That's not copying. Like, it's not like you're jacking their video and putting it on your channel, right? It's um, you're making content that you have a reasonable confidence that will work for for a, a new potential audience. Um, and I like that a lot, right? Because there's like, I feel like a lot of people, a lot of creators. This is this was true even like with just blogging, right? Like, why am I going to write a blog post about this when like a bunch of people have already written that blog post? And it's like, well, you haven't written that blog post yet. Like, you have your own life experience and insight, and the same thing goes for YouTube videos and and uh, and podcast episodes, right? Like, you know, you know, you maybe well, you've been on other podcasts. Is this interview exactly the same as as the other ones you've been on? No, no, yeah. I I one hundred percent agree with you. Everyone has their own voice, and like, yeah. you know, people are like super fans of you, but like they might not be super fans of somebody similar. So like, they want right. to hear it from your your voice. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Jake. This has been such a fantastic conversation. Um, if people want to learn more about you, uh, where can or they want to pick up the sweet sweet Creator Hooks Pro, uh, where can they go? Uh, CreatorHooks dot com. All right. Creatorhooks.com. I, um, again, like hashtag or whatever. I don't know what that's called on Mastodon, but not a sponsor, (laughs) but just a, such a valuable, such a valuable resource because again, you you can spend all this time making great content. Um, but people, people need a reason to click on it. Yeah. Um, And also, so it's about YouTube titles, but I have used the same strategies for like Twitter threads, uh, email subject lines. Oh, that's so smart. I've ranked on um, on like number one on Google for like kind of using those strategies. Yeah. Uh, like one of my best threads is ninety uh, percent of people are making YouTube videos backwards. Uh, you know, and to kind of just yeah. break that down, and that is from a like a, a cleaning YouTube channel. It was like ninety nine percent, ninety percent of people are decluttering their house backwards. Um, wow. So, I'm part of that 99%. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I have so, three kids now, so it's like a uphill battle for me. But. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're toast. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, so so yes, it is like the the the, pot, the newsletter is about YouTube, but you can use these strategies for everything. Yeah, that's all. Which is why it's not called YouTube Hooks. It's called Creator Hooks. That's great. Well, uh, exactly, I, you know, it's, yes. Yeah, so uh, for sure, like as soon as we get off of this call and I can like focus on, I don't like to do, I don't like to buy things while I'm, 
not focusing on that. So you'll see an email come in from me after this call. Sweet. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, it's just, it's so great because like you said, it, it applies because it's, it's buyer psychology. We'll talk about more that more in pro as well. Um, But Jake, thanks so much for spending time with us today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, Joe. And thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. If you want to learn about pricing and buyer psychology and you want to hear no ads, you can sign up for How I Built It Pro over at howibuilt.it slash pro for all the show notes. You can go to howibuilt.it slash 304, which there'll be a pro button there too. Thanks to our sponsors, Gap Scout, Groundhog, and LearnDash, their support is uh, immeasurable to me. I really appreciate them. And I appreciate you. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, get out there and build something.